Yo, hey everybody, it's Stephen Eagle, Digital Commando, and it's Thursday, so time for another episode, and now it's episode four of season two, and we have the fantastic Katie Heenan joining me from Pink Cow Marketing. We're going to bring her into the room in just a second. So guys, today, if you've got any marketing-related questions, any startup-related questions, um, then please do drop them into the comments, and we'll keep an eye on that, and we'll answer them for you today. So guys, this is what we're there for. Um, yeah, let's bring Katie into the room. Daisy, how are you doing? Great, thank you. How are you? I am good. Thank you very much. Um, Katie, for those watching, tell everybody um, a little bit about you and a bit about Pink Cow Marketing. So I'm 21 years old. I'm in my final year of university at Bournemouth and I run a marketing agency called Pink Cow Marketing, helping companies to stand out from the herd. So I've been running this since April. I um, started off in the pandemic from being made redundant and I've just been rolling with it ever since. Happy days. So starting a marketing agency in April, the peak of the, the pandemic, I think the peak of the, is this pandemic two? In like pandemic one, <laughs> <laughs> when it was really bad. So I remember that, because I, I got coronavirus in March. So we, we went into lockdown, I think it was like straight after that. I think I went to a funeral and then straight after that we were in lockdown. So that was around March time. So. How has that been, starting a company in, in, in all this? How, how have you found that? Yeah, so it was obviously a little bit of a risk, but I also at the same time had nothing to lose. I didn't have to invest anything into the company. Um, and I initially started off helping my brother with his marketing, so I already had a customer, which was really, really helpful. Cool. And I'd had a few people come to me just as they were looking to outsource a little bit more instead of hiring or keeping their people on full time, they wanted to go for the furlough approach. Yeah. So they tended to outsource a lot of stuff because it's just better for them. Um, it was definitely a challenge. I was a bit concerned as to how many customers I was gonna get, how, how many people were actually willing to pay for their marketing at the moment. But then with a lot of people moving from a storefront to moving online, there was kind of enough of a market for me to be able to push. Absolutely. I think now, I think for all things, I know lots of businesses are in, in dire straits and struggling at the minute, but, and I tell everybody in the academy, everyone in the academy that's watching knows this, it's never been a better time to be in digital marketing. Everybody who sells stuff in shops has, like 100% has to move online now. If they don't move online, their shop will not be there in 12 months, I guarantee. So they exactly. need to everything online. So it's never been a better time for people like us where we get to go out, market their products, get them sold, make them some money, which is what they're all about. Um, and yeah, so I think, yeah, good choice. Very good choice. <laughs> now I did say I was gonna ask you a question. We had a bit of a chat before we started the show. And I'm wondering if there's like a company name generator somewhere that gives you, put, spits out a color and, and an animal to give you the names. How did you come well, up with Pink Cow Marketing? Well, I mean, a lot of people do always say that's how you come up with a marketing agency name. You pick a colour and you pick an animal like Purple Frog or anything like that. I Pink Cow Purple Frog is actually, a, is actually an agency. Exactly, exactly. Um, Pink Cow didn't quite come about that way. I was sitting in my lounge with my mum and my dad. We kind of brainstormed some different ideas, thinking about different things. We were thinking about, I don't know, butterfly companies, butterfly in different languages, like coming out of the chrysalis. We were just thinking of loads of different things and I love the colour pink and somehow we just ended up going for pink cow. <laughs> I suppose and it didn't that. exist, so. That was quite a funny image actually, so it's, yeah, I like that. Um, and we were looking um, for something that I could put a cheesy line to, a little tagline to, so we went for pink cow marketing, stand out from the herd, so that we could have the little yeah, cheesy pun there. <laughs> No, it needs to be done. It's very, very cool. Um, no, but good choice. Uh, I, I just thought I'd throw it out because there's so many, isn't there? The um, and we I, we find it. I always find it like an ongoing joke. It's funny to come mm. see how people what people can come up with next. Um, so that's cool. No, thanks for sharing that. That's wicked. Um, so also you've got into a business at the beginning of a pandemic, which is crazy enough as it is, but obviously working for you, which is good. Um, what other difficulties have you found that um, as a kind of startup business? What's the most difficult bit been? A lot of the problem is that you're trying to convince people that you are one of the best people to go to. And if you're as a startup, you may not have a huge portfolio of work. Even if you have all of the knowledge, 
a lot of people are sometimes hesitant. So it's a lot about trying to find clients that are not willing to take a risk, but uh, willing to understand that you've had the training, you know what you're doing, and that you are worth investing in. Mm -hmm. So that that's often one of the struggles. And also being at university as well, people don't always take me super seriously. They think, okay, well, are you focusing just on university? Are you focusing on this? Are you going to have the time to commit to what my business needs? Which is yeah. a hard battle to try and win. I can get that. No, that, that makes sense. I can see why people would think that. Now, realistically, we know that marketing doesn't take very long when it's done correctly, which is great. Um, a monthly contract will normally take one to two days to fulfill for the average client, uh, which is good. So people don't use that as an excuse not to work with Katie. Um, yeah, I think how, how that must be a weird balance, trying to do uni as well as um, as well as the marketing. So what? Oh, tell everybody what you do in university. That's probably a good so I study um, event management yep. at Bournemouth University. Um, but lots of marketing we do within that. So. Okay, cool. So is that where you've learned your marketing? Or, or you a know? lot of it. Um, at one of my placements in third year at the Royal Society of Medicine, I went on a few marketing courses cool. and had the chance to learn a few different things. Then during March, when I was working from home, I yeah. again did a few courses, did all of the Google courses, did everything else. So from about 16, I'd started to do marketing at a Saturday job and then have kind of grown and grown it from there. Oh, wicked. The Google courses are great as well. Um, I really like them. I quite enjoyed them. They're so intensive um, going, mm. and they're so detailed as well. If anybody, and I know there are people that watch this that don't do this, if anybody manages ads or has someone that manages ads for them that hasn't done the Google course or any training, please get them to do it. It's fucking free. <laughs> so actually go and do it, um, especially if you're spending lots of money. Right. <laughs> So event management. Now, event management is a great way to, like, coupling that with marketing is a fantastic way to, to learn how to do effective marketing. Now, from my background, most people know that I started off as an events company, Sigma Events Management, um, in Dubai. That grew and grew and grew to the point where people came to us and were saying, right, Stefan, all your events are, are full of people. Can you do the same thing for us? And I was like, uh, yeah, cool. You don't want me to organize the event? And they were like, no, no, just get people there. That's so much easier than events management. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what I'm going to do. I'll just do the getting people, basically promotion, isn't it? What promoters used to do, but online. Mm -hmm. um, cool, I'll get the people to the events and I get paid for everybody that turns up. Sweet, that works for me. And then it became actually like, I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to do the events management because that's really difficult. Um, mm -hmm. Fifth most, most stressful job on the planet, apparently. Um, and I, I agree, <laughs> it's horrible. Um, so yeah, switched over to marketing agency. But actually, that's a really good backup. Having those two skill sets does work uh, really, really well. So starting a marketing agency. Now, I love what I do. Everybody knows I love what I do. What is it that you love about the job? I love the fact that I can take a company or a new startup from having no sales on their websites, from having a very, very small social media growth, to having thousands, to instantly improving their revenue in just a matter of months, just with some really basic steps. And then also giving those business owners the knowledge that they need to then continue that in whatever way that they want, as well as obviously hiring me for different things. But the fact that you can really help a company just grow almost exponentially by just putting in a few hours of work each week I think is really quite a rewarding thing to do. It is. And I think when it's done right, those conversations that you have at the end of every month are fantastic. People are always, yeah. this is one of the things that we changed our agency. Up. Well, from the very beginning, I'd come from another agency, wasn't particularly happy how they ran things. Um, because at the end of the month, I was having to have those horrible, horrible conversations where people go, well, I've spent this much money and I got this much money out and they're not happy. Whereas we don't have them in conversations anymore. It's great. Mm -hmm. they, Oh, we made more money. Yeah, sweet. Happy days. Um, so they're the really good ones. Now, obviously, marketing and digital marketing is such a broad subject. It's huge, isn't it? We've got everything from SEO to content to social media management and everything else. Um, which part of it is the bit that you enjoy the most? Or is there an area in which you specialize in? So we do a lot of bespoke content. We do a lot of content writing for articles, for blogs, lots of web page writing. 
which is a lot of where we get the majority of our business from. But I also really, really love building new websites as well. That's always a really fun one, having to sit down with a client, creating what their new brand's going to be, what their colours are, how exactly they want it to look and help to make their vision a reality uh, is, is a really, really fun one for me. All right. And there's a big question then. So what do you build websites on? It depends on the client's needs. So we Good can do art. from WordPress, Shopify, Wix, even GoDaddy. If there is a company that wants something and they have a small budget and they want it very simple, you don't have to go and do loads and loads of bespoke coding and overcharge people for it. Yeah. That's just not what they need. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think there's, I, I don't like Wix. And I don't like GoDaddy either. But, and we would never build one on the website. Mm. But that's because we don't work with small clients. Now, yeah. we did, I think it's, that you're you're absolutely spot on. I like that you said that because there's so many people out there that wouldn't charge. They would well, actually, I know people that charge the same price as a WordPress website and they build it on Wix, uh, which is bonkers. Yeah, um, yeah. No, it's nice that you can offer that service to people, so they're not being overcharged um, by. I don't know, like our agency. If someone came to us, we don't overcharge. <laughs> that sounded weird the way I said that. But if someone came to us, there's a minimum that we can work with them on. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if they, they have got a small budget, it's nice that people can service those sorts of clients. Um, so what was I going to say? I, I always lose my train of thought. I'm so good at these shows. <laughs> you would think after 50 episodes in Series 1, I would have got the hang of it by now. But, but I haven't. Um, right. Content. What time are we on? We've got time. Good. Um, so we talk about content quite a lot. Um, and I'm a big ambassador for paid ads. Everybody knows this. I don't really like branding, but there's there's definitely a place for it. Um, as a kind of service, do you favor paid ads over organic social media? I know that it's really hard to find organic social media agencies these days. Again, it is very dependent on what the client is selling, what their product is. And again, what their needs really are. I do do a hell of a lot of the organic social media stuff. If you're a startup or, again, you don't have a huge amount of budget, I think that organic social media marketing is a fantastic way to get your name out there, mm -hmm. to get a good brand personality without having to spend lots. And it, I think it's just a really fabulous way to grow your network in a very kind of meaningful way for a startup. But then with the larger companies, paid ads work really well. Google works well. LinkedIn ads are fabulous. Facebook ads are great. But again, it's just very dependent on the company and their products and everything that they are then trying to sell. What social media channel did you mention there that's absolutely popping off right now? Um, <laughs> LinkedIn, oh, Facebook. We love a bit of TikTok on this show. TikTok. Oh. Yeah, oh, so we've done... Oh, yeah. <laughs> We do TikTok for one company, and they are fabulous with it. They love it. I think TikTok's absolutely mint. I think it's yeah. so good. Um, massively undercharged if you're an e-commerce brand with sports goods, especially sports goods, um, or if there's a new fad that comes out, like fidget spinners or something, <laughs> jump onto paid ads on TikTok straight away. Um, like I don't know if Gymshark are advertising on um, TikTok. I've never seen an ad for them, but they definitely should be. They would make absolutely millions. Um, like no shit, seriously millions. Like because every that's what everybody's doing. They're all doing their fitness videos and all that, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Strictly come dancing. I think they're they should be on there if they're not already. I think they're on there because um, mm -hmm. everybody's doing dances. Um, but yeah, it, there's another that is such an underutilized platform same as youtube still as youtube's massively underutilized as well um when it comes to influencers in our kind of space is there anybody that stands out to you um that you're a big fan of that you kind of follow um i'll be oh. honest i don't i well of course of course you um i don't tend to follow a huge amount of marketing influencers maybe i should um just simply because well i don't i don't really have the time <laughs> um <laughs> There are some great networkers that are online, um, which are always good to meet, but I prefer to meet them actually in the networking events as opposed to just yeah. kind of following them online. No, that's cool. I think there was a couple of inf in people that everybody knows. Gary V, obviously huge in the space. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely wicked. He's definitely worth a follow. If anybody doesn't follow him, follow him for a month and see if you can switch him off. It's difficult. <laughs> um, Frank Kern, absolutely amazing marketer. 
Um, he's absolutely smashing it. Um, they're probably two of my favourites. There's loads in there. There's absolutely loads out there. Mm-hmm. But Gary Vee's pretty spot on, and he doesn't try and sell you anything, which is nice. Apart from his trainers, of which <laughs> I definitely have all of Gary's Vee's trainers. Because <laughs> I'm a loser, um, pretty much. Um, so what's the next step for you guys? Uh, so you've got Pink Cow Market up and running, um, starting to bring clients on now. What's next? So we're working on a couple of new business ideas that we'll probably be pushing forward with uh, in the new year. In terms of what we're doing at the moment, I think just expanding our kind of monthly client base, Mm -hmm. trying to broaden out, reach out to a slightly different client base, moving away from, as well as keeping the startups, but to kind of expand that onto companies where they've tried the online marketing already and they've gone perhaps with a different agency, but it hasn't worked out for them. And kind of taking over from there and showing them actually when it's done correctly or you outsource it and you use it in the correct way it can make you so much money so i think we're kind of going to be targeting towards that area a bit more okay cool and if there was a company that came to you tomorrow and said right okay um we're starting from absolute scratch we haven't really done anything we've got our social media channels but we don't use them um what would be your advice in the very beginning for, to get them up and running for people anybody watching now that's starting up a business so firstly it is a very exciting time for you this is probably one of the most fun parts of having a business creating your brand image creating your name really defining what the personality and what the voice of your brand is going to be are you going to be a very serious informative b2b kind of company or are you going to be a really fun b2c kind of company um so take your time really think about who your customer base is going to be and then work out what your brand voice is going to be from there and um, have loads of fun with it. Try and join as many groups as you can. Facebook has tons of small business groups, as does LinkedIn. That's a really, really great way for you to make a lot of connections in a very small time. Um, and just, yeah, just have a great time with it. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, you, you mentioned networking earlier, like going to networking events and things like that. Do you have any preferred networking events that are kind of that you would advise people to go to or any tips on networking for those that haven't done it before? So we have recently discovered the fun of net walking. So you can bring a dog along, you go for a lovely walk with all these other business members. And obviously it's outside, you're socially distanced and it's a really great, great way to have that face-to-face interaction. Very, very fun. And I would highly recommend that. I also really like a business buzz if you're more into the virtual ones. Yeah. It's on the Remo platform. So you have little tables that you can move along to. So it's a little bit more informal than if you were to have just a Zoom call. Now, if you're doing your networking, very, very important, make sure that you do a follow up with everybody that you've spoken to. Make sure that you have good, meaningful conversations. I always keep a notepad next to me, jot down people's names, their company and a bit of information about them so that when you do follow up, you can have a a nice conversation. You're not starting from scratch. Just go have fun. Be smiley. Everybody likes a positive person um and just try and meet as many people as possible networking isn't expensive and the fact that you can do it all online now is a really really great way to do it i am still here sorry the camera just, <laughs> it does this all the time um no, that's great advice for people i think it's good and it is a good time to network that networking sounds absolutely wicked I'm, Brilliant. Never heard of that. I'm gonna find out if there's one near me um i think that is really cool um Buzz events, yeah, absolutely agree with you when it comes to the business buzz events. We've got some of those local to us, I think like Banbury and Vista and mm-hmm. Lemon. Um, but yeah, business buzz is wicked. And the Remo platform is so much better than Zoom. It's so it? cool. it can be a little bit glitchy. So anybody that does go to any of these events, please do it from a computer, um, not from a phone. It doesn't work, um, especially if you try and get on stage. But it's it's such a cool one where you can just jump around the tables and speak to people. Mm-hmm. I like that one. Um, when it comes to follow ups, now, uh, one of my friends actually did a huge rant yesterday, uh, which was great. Absolutely, absolutely great guy. Um, so he runs an agency called Spaghetti over in Leviton Spot, uh, or Warwick, Leviton Spot, one or two. Um, and he did a cool rant yesterday, which was about LinkedIn specifically and these potentially follow ups or initial introductions um, where everybody who's been on LinkedIn will know when you get a connection and somebody just fires at you going, Hey, how are you doing? Buy my shit. It's like, whoa, who are you? Um, 
what advice would you give people in regards to LinkedIn? Um, and then we've got Scott that's commenting today, um, which we've, we've had a couple of them go up on the screen. He's on LinkedIn today. Um, what would your advice be to anybody that wants to contact people on LinkedIn? What's your approach? I think very much if you're approaching somebody, talk to somebody the way that you would like to be spoken to. Don't just fire in a massive long paragraph that you send to absolutely everybody that's got three different links to what you're selling. Have a conversation. A really great way to do it is to ask somebody to schedule a call in. If they want to know more, they'll agree to have a call with you and you can have a video call and it can be much more personal than just having a random name that appears on your screen and is spamming you. Also, if somebody doesn't reply and they've seen the message, the chances are they probably don't want the same message again. So there's no point in repeatedly spamming somebody. If you want to you know, show up on their feed or be in their mind, interact with their posts, mm -hmm. find something that might be of actual use to them and connect with them that way. Don't just go full sales because that's no better than cold calling, in my opinion. Oh, I love a bit of cold calling. Um, so anybody knows my background, I used to run a cold calling center, um, which I loved actually, I like sales. Um, yeah. People, social media is meant to be social. Um, it's very much exactly you have to be conversational um, in order to do that. So it can't just be you jump online, you fire out all your comments, you hope everybody will listen, and then you leave. Um, it does not work like that. You do need to converse with people and at least pretend to be interested. Um, our age old strategy of, and I think it might be the first time I've said it in this season, maybe. Show people you can help them by actually helping them trick. Um, so yeah, jump. Um, our advice would be like jump on LinkedIn and try and help people um, in the sense of do a little bit of a look, have a look at who they are, what they do, um, look at some of their previous comments or posts or what they've been up to lately. And maybe, just maybe, they might have put a post out in the last couple of days saying, I'm really looking for somebody that does this. And you can go, oh, do you know what? I really know somebody that does that. And then you do an introduction. Hi, I saw the other day you were looking for this. Uh, would you like me to introduce you to my friend who does that thing? Um, and they go, yeah, that would be great. Instantly, you've helped them. You've done something for them at absolutely no charge, um, which is nice. It's a nice thing. Human beings are reciprocal creatures. So naturally, what we would like to do once something, someone does something for us is we want to do something back. It's the reason why we exchange gifts at Christmas. We don't just take them unless you're one of them. Um, it's very much how we do it. So, yeah, just, yeah, don't be a dick. That's it, really. Is this, Pretty is much, that? yeah. Yeah, um, I hate those people. And if you do it to me, it's get blocked anyway. Um, I just instantly block people. Um, Todd sends them a cow, actually. That's funny. Um, yeah, he sends them this video of a cow. But if, for <laughs> anybody that does it to me, it's really, really funny how he does it. Um, but yeah, right. So that we've kind of covered a little bit on LinkedIn. We talked covered about on TikTok, um, Instagram. Now everybody struggles to get their head around Instagram. Everybody over the age of thirty, right? We just weren't there for it. Um, now I get Instagram completely now. But what's your advice to people that use Instagram or want to get into using Instagram? Um, take the time to make whatever product you have, well, Instagrammable. Make sure that it's visually appealing. So, for example, there was a company that I know, a cake making company, and they would post a picture of a different cake every single day. And they racked up the followers so quickly, purely because everybody liked to see a really good looking cake. Mm -hmm. So if you can do the same sort of thing with your product, depending on what it is, even if that's a service, you can have a more personal approach and bring yourself in for that. So today we're doing this thing on Photoshop. We're doing this. It's a really, really great way to boost your followers just by posting regularly and by posting visually appealing things. And you don't need to do a massive long spiel on your comments. Use effective hashtags and use effective keywords on it and you'll be laughing. That is good advice. And with hashtags, I love the hashtag conversation because do not use hashtags that everybody else is using. Use hashtags that people search for. It's the difference. That's why you get the interaction. And lots of people go, oh, loads of people are using this hashtag. Yeah, it doesn't matter. If no one's searching for it, it's irrelevant. Um, so just be very, very aware of that. Uh, we've got comments from Hannah coming in from Facebook. You don't give to receive, babe. No, Hannah, I, I get that. But when we, we're, I'm talking about business aspect. We do something for people naturally, they want to reciprocate, hopefully. 
them or somebody else will buy something off us at some point. Or we shouldn't be in business. Um, and Hannah loves cake. And Charlie will probably watch this at some point. Charlie loves cake. Charlie is <laughs> a big videographer uh, and photographer, the tall photographer. Um, uh, yeah, absolute cake. Crazy. Uh, Mark on LinkedIn, hashtags is key. It is. Um, obviously, hashtags we are quite key on a lot of platforms now, especially LinkedIn. Uh, so we've probably got some hashtags on here. Not sure. We'll have to make sure. Um, spot on. Make hashtags stand out. Yeah. And obviously, for those that don't understand hashtags so much, there's a couple of different reasons they can be used. Now, some hashtags are just used for emphasis. Um, so you can just go, right, I really want to emphasize this word. Great for use on Facebook. Um, although people use hashtags on Facebook, they're not really searched for very often. Um, more on Instagram. So if you are using them, great. Use them for emphasis more than anything else to make a word stand out. Um, other ways to use a hashtag uh, would be to uh, to track it. If you're doing a campaign, um, obviously you can track hashtags and there's loads of great software out there that can allow you to track your campaigns across different platforms and just go, right, show me how many times this hashtag's been used and viewed and reached and the rest of it. Um, those lovely vanity metrics I talk about a lot. Um, you can get that, but great for clients. They like that shit. Um, cool. Where are you? Okay, we've got a couple of minutes left, KE. Um, any final thoughts or advice you want to give uh, everybody that jumped on the show today? Um, if you are nervous about starting something or a bit scared, just go for it. There's not a lot that can go wrong massively. Just give it your best shot. Make sure you do effective research, whether you're starting a new business, whether you're trying to do a new product, or whether you're looking at getting a new marketing agency. Research is so important. Make sure that what you're doing is going to be effective. Make sure that you're going to be targeting the right people. And make sure at the end of the day that you are investing your money in the best way as possible. And 100% mark, make your hashtag stand out, stand out from the herd. <laughs> Hide that in at the end. That's good. Works, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, you're in marketing or something. Um, yeah. Katie, thank you so much for jumping on the show with me today. For anybody that wants to get in touch with you, what's the easiest way to get in touch with you? Facebook, LinkedIn, or you can email me at katie at pink-cow.com. Brilliant. Uh, guys, we will drop the links into Katie's site as well um, in the chat in just a second. But for that is it for now. That's it for this week. Um, it's been a bonkers week. It's crazy. We're about to move offices. We'll be new in the new Sigma Digital HQ as of Monday. Um, so keep an eye out for that. We'll have two more fantastic guests on Tuesday and Thursday. We'll have some training for you on Wednesday. And we might have a couple more secrets coming out next week as well. So loads of exciting stuff. It's crazy. Anybody that wants to jump on the DC 100K, anybody that not, want, not heard about that, it's irrelevant if you don't know about it already. Most of my LinkedIn connections know about it. DC 100K, there's a few places left. Um, anybody wants to be a freelancer and make £100,000 a year, and we'll teach you how to do that in just eight weeks. Uh, the course starts on the 16th of November, which is Cyber Monday. There you go, best day to start. Um, so, guys, anybody interested in that, give me a shout. Happy to help. Um, but, Casey, once again, thank you very much for joining me. Everybody who watched, thank you very much for joining us. Feel free to continue if you're watching it on the replay and drop in your questions. Uh, Casey and I will hopefully answer them for you. Uh, but that's it. We'll see you all next week. Okay, guys, that is it. Peace out.